If someone wants to communicate with a program on another computer, they make a request to its IP address, right? Easy peasy. But what happens if that computer is running multiple programs? And what if those programs are all trying to communicate at the exact same time? Well, that's what ports are for. Say I have a web server running on port 80, and I also have a database on the same machine running on port 5432. When my customers hit my server, I want them to talk to the web server and get a web page as the response. But I, as the website developer, still want to be able to remotely access my database directly so I can manually delete spam accounts and honestly, more likely accidentally drop the settings table. But the point is still that the database is a separate process from the web server, and we don't want web traffic hitting it directly. Ports are what solves this problem. A port is just a number in the software layer managed by the operating system that allows us to route traffic to different applications on the same machine. There are 65,536 ports in most setups, which might feel oddly specific, but it's just because port numbers are represented as a 16-bit unsigned integer. So it's just two to the 16th. For the most part, you can use whatever ports you want for your networked applications, but there are default ports for specific use cases. For example, HTTP traffic defaults to port 80, when you go to google.com, you don't have to type in google.com colon 80 because 80 is just the default port for the HTTP protocol. Or more likely you're using HTTPS, which has a default port of 443. Now, if Google decided to run their production web servers on port 420 instead of 443, then you actually would have to explicitly type google.com colon 420 in the URL to get to the Google homepage, which would really suck. And that's why we have default ports for different use cases in the first place.